All right, in this video, I'm gonna be going through how you can use Langchain to talk and extract information from CSV files and Excel files just by using natural language to query them. So in this case, we're gonna be going back to the open AI language models. So you will need an open AI key here. You can see the latest version of Langchain that I'm using. And the data set that I'm gonna be using is the Black Friday sales data set. So this is available from Kaggle. I've put a link to it here if you want to go and find out more information about it. Really, we're just using it as a simple way to bring in a CSV file and test some things out. In this case, I'm bringing in the train CSV. There's both a train CSV and a test CSV. It really doesn't matter here because we're not training a model. We're not doing anything like that. We're just using another model to query the CSV file. To just get a sanity check of what's here, what I've done is basically set up pandas, which I'm sure many of you will know, and then use pandas to read in the CSV, and then just have a look at what the first five records and what the column names are. So you can see that we've got gender, and you'll notice that gender is F and M. We've got age, which looks like it's bucketed age. We've got stay in city, current city, number of years. We've got marital status. We've got a bunch of different things in there. We're not going to use this particular one that I've set up. This is just a sanity check. Langchain will use its own one to load it in. The way we're going to do this in Langchain is we're going to use the CSV agent. So the CSV agent it has a number of things you need to be a little bit careful about because what it's actually doing is running a Python agent under the hood. So you want to be a bit careful of anything like a prompt injection attack or something like that. So if you are using it for end users that are not yourself or not people you trust, uh, be a little bit careful about the environment that you're going to run the Python agent in. In this case, we're just running it ourselves, so it's not a big deal at all. Okay, so we're going to bring in from Langchain agents, we're going to bring in the create CSV agent. We're going to also bring in the open AI large language model here, and we're going to create this agent. And remember, we always create an agent by passing in a language model. So that's the first thing that's being passed in here. We're setting the temperature to zero. This is to basically, we don't want it randomly changing the facts that are in the CSV when it's feeding back, etc. We want to try and reduce hallucination as much as possible. So therefore we set the temperature to zero. We're passing in the CSV file itself, and we're going to pass in verbose equals true. So this is basically just so that we can see what's going on with the prompts as it goes through. All right, so if we have a look at the agent, we can see that, okay, it's certainly got a number of language models in there and language model chains in there. You can see that some of the, this has got the prompt in there that we've got, which we'll look at it in a second. It's also got things like it's going to have an input and a scratch pad. So the ideas of a scratch pad is that it can take some output from one call to the language model and use it as part of an input for the next call to a language model. Let's kind of look at the, and we can see that as it goes on, it passes in a, a bunch of examples of the data and stuff that it's got in the agent. Now it's not passing all that into each call, right? That's not the idea here. What it, we've got here is we're basically passing in a prompt. So let's look at the prompt. I could just copy this prompt. It would be better if I just paste it in there and now we can read the prompt quite easily. We can see that, okay, this first prompt is basically going to be you are working with a pandas data frame. So this is the same thing as what I set up, but it's using its own loader for loading it. And we'll look at, you could actually use that loader as a separate component later on if you wanted to. You're working with a pandas data frame in Python. Data frame is, the name of data frame is DF, very conventional sort of thing. And then it's basically telling it, these are the tools that you can use below. In this case, it's just using the Python REPL, right? Read, evaluate, print loop that's going on here. And then it talks a little bit about the format that it can use and what it should output for actions, for observations, and any thoughts. And then we can see that what we do is we eventually we're passing in the head of the data frame. So this is just like what I printed it up, up at the top of the notebook. We're passing in the input question and we're passing in the scratch pad as this thing goes on. So let's kick it off and start by asking a simple question. How many rows are in there? So you'll see that the agent is doing a similar thing. So actually just one thing I forgot to point out is when we look at the, the actual agent, we can see we're not using the React agent here. We're using a zero-shot agent, which is slightly different than the 
one that we used when in the video I made about agents. All right, but we've still got a similar sort of concept here where we're going to make a call. It's going to decide what sort of action to take. So we can see that we've gone into this agent executor chain. It's passed in how many rows are there. And its thought is I need to count the number of rows. So then it's going to use the Python REPL for that. And it's going to basically just pass in the data frame and say, okay, what's the length of the data frame? The data frame is 550,000. So then it gives us back this final answer. The next thing is we can ask it something a little bit more complicated. So how many people are female in here? So this is an interesting one because we haven't said in the actual data frame, it doesn't use the word female or male. It uses F and M, but, and it uses the column name gender. So we haven't used the word gender. We haven't used F. We haven't used M in the same way, but sure enough, we can see that, okay, I need to count the number of people who are female. And then it works out that, okay, to do that, because it's got the head of the data frame, it can work out based on the columns that are, oh, okay, it's going to be in the gender and it's going to be F and I just need to count that. So it's gone and count, counted all of that up and then it knows the answer and it's giving us this answer back 135,000. We can ask it more complicated questions too. So we can ask it things like how many people have stayed more than three years in the city? So that's one of the fields that they have is staying current city number of years. And you can see, sure enough, it's worked out that it needs to filter the data frame for people who've stayed in the city, in their city for more than three years. And it basically just writes the pandas query here, gets the information, returns that. So gradually as you go along, you should try it and do more complicated things. So here I'm asking it, okay, what about how many people have stayed for more than three years and are female? So again, it's done a nice job of taking the input writing the, the pandas query, which is going to be the stay in city greater than three and gender equals F. And it's able then to return to us how many of those people are female. We can ask it quantitative questions where things like, okay, are there more males than females? Now we know this based on it. And we can see that, okay, what it's done is in its scratch pad, in the observation, it's basically outputted that it's counted the number for males and the number for females. And then from that, it's able to then work out that, okay, there are more males than females. So that's the basic agent. And this will work for any CSV that you want to put into it. If you want to actually make a custom agent, you could use the Langchain document loader and use the CSV loader. So this is a very simple sort of thing of just loading up the CSV yourself. And then you would put in some sort of custom chain here for a specific task that you want to do. If you want to use an Excel file, no problem. You just basically put in some code to convert your Excel file. So this is the example of the Excel file and put it converted over to be a CSV file and import it that way. So Langchain doesn't have native, it doesn't have native Excel import. And it's important that you understand that what we're doing here is we're operating on it as if it's a data frame and not necessarily strictly like a spreadsheet where we could look at very specific cells and formulas in those cells, that kind of thing. It's a little bit different than this. So here we've brought in another one that was an Excel file. I've just asked it, okay, what are the column names? It's able to work out that, okay, these are the column names and tell us what they are. Then I can say, okay, there's age. So what is the average age? It's able to calculate that out. If we look at some of these that are a little bit more complicated, okay, which country appears the most and how many times does it appear? It goes through, it works out that the United States appears the most. And you can see that once it's got this information, it's going back to the language model to rewrite that information. So the country that appears most is United States appearing 48 times. We can even do things like ratios. So here we can basically ask it, okay, what's the ratio of males to females? And this is a different CSV file than we had before. Remember the other one had a lot more males. This one seems to have a lot more females than, than males. But so this gives you a sense of what you can do with this for both CSV files and Excel files. And it allows you to write very simple little apps that allow people who don't know how to use pandas, for example, to query a bunch of data really quickly and find out information that's relevant to them. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Remember, if you like this video, please click and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.